The advantages of radar were obvious. A system that could give advance warning of attacking aircraft on their way would be an invaluable defense. Obvious though it was, not everyone saw the benefits right away. Japanese military leaders, still hankering after some kind of death ray, were more interested in a lethal weapon than radar. Even though the scientists and engineers provided them technology that could be used, the military services did not express much interest in developing radar. The Navy, for example, saw radar largely useful as a navigational aid. When Japan first entered the war in 1941, their forces swept through the Pacific, easily overcoming Allied resistance. They had, they thought, all the weapons they needed. Then, in June 1942, the Japanese suffered their first major setback. When American and Japanese ships went head to head in one of the great sea battles of World War II. Against overwhelming odds, the American Navy won a great victory in what came to be known as the Battle of Midway. The Japanese were stunned from the results of Midway. Many of their prime ships lay at the bottom of the North Pacific, but psychologically, the Japanese Navy has suffered its first major defeat. Desperate, with defeat looming, the Japanese high command appealed to its scientists and engineers for ideas for new weapons. A brilliant young naval scientist called Ito Yoji had two extraordinary suggestions for Japan's leaders to consider. Either build an atomic bomb or reinvestigate the idea of a death ray. After months and months of research on the atomic bomb, they found it simply wasn't feasible to build a nuclear weapon. So they went with the death ray. Ironically, the success of radar in Britain had led to a technological breakthrough which might now help the Japanese in their pursuit of a death ray. At the outbreak of war, Britain had a coastal radar system called Chain Home. It worked well, but because it used long radio waves, it required radio masts 400 feet high to send and receive the signal. In 1940, Two British scientists from the University of Birmingham, Henry Boot and John Randall, invented a device called a cavity magnetron. It could produce much more power in much shorter wavelengths. They were called microwaves. Microwaves are a matter of a fraction of an inch in wavelengths and convey a lot of heat energy into a small space. That's why it is that we all have microwave ovens in our homes. Microwave technology meant that smaller radar transmitters could now be carried on ships and planes. It also had a practical application for Japan's killer ray gun. The reason that the invention of the magnetron seemed to bring the death ray closer is that microwaves carry more energy than conventional radio waves do. You can be bombarded with radio waves all day from a certain distance it's not going to kill you but you can't be bombarded with microwaves for very long without it damaging using microwave technology the japanese army built extraordinary death ray prototypes at a new laboratory in shimada a hundred miles west of tokyo they looked much like a modern day satellite dish they would send out a strong, highly focused beam of microwaves, which would be fired at a target. What we have is a device that you can point at an invading army and one sweeping stroke fry all the people who are coming at you. Skin melting, eyes melting, people dropping dead. It would, in essence, cook them from within. It would denature their protein. It would heat up their cells so that they could no longer function. Japanese army records show that the first death ray victims were rabbits. As the death rays got more powerful, Japanese records state that they use monkeys as targets. 
And that has a sinister implication because many times, instead of recording human beings, they would write monkeys. So it's a possibility that the Army also used human beings in this research with the death ray. We don't know that for sure, but there's a, a very high probability that they did. But killing animals and possibly humans in controlled conditions was a long way from producing a death ray for the battlefield. What you've got to do is make a weapon that can bring down a person a long way away. And that's very different from just bombarding a sitting duck with microwaves. The Japanese hoped to sight death rays on ships and along the coast to zap invading armies and bring down planes. In tests, they found a death ray could disable moving vehicles by short-circuiting the electrics, but only from a distance of a few yards. So could the Japanese really have fringed the coast with microwave transmitters and stopped anything from coming near? Of course they couldn't. The amount of energy, in theory, you'd need to generate would be all the world's power stations put together. The war ended before the Japanese death ray was ready for battle. As Japanese leaders signed the formal surrender on September 2nd, 1945, they may well have concluded that if they'd chosen to concentrate their research on the weirdest weapon of them all, the nuclear bomb, then the outcome of World War II may have been very different.